And then, and then he left the hotel. And, and to this day, nobody knows who he is. <laughs> it was absolutely mental. <laughs> Sorry, you've just caught me entertaining some friends. <laughs> All right, mate, yeah, I'll see you next week, yeah? <laughs> this is unit six. <laughs>
uh, which the name might suggest. It simply means a molecule that is based upon uh, carbon. Um, carbon, hydrogen, nitrogen, and oxygen. Those are the four main elements that you'll find in these, in these molecules. Occasionally other, other, other elements as well, such as phosphorus uh, in psilocybin, for example. Um, but anyway, um, now, if you're going to really understand um, how these molecules interact with receptors and what you know, makes psychedelic molecules psychedelic, then it is important that you do understand some organic chemistry. So I'm not going to assume that you have any background in organic chemistry. Um, but I, so I'm going to basically explain in like five minutes the absolute fundamentals of what you need to know about organic chemistry. Hopefully for many of you it will be perfectly familiar anyway. Um, okay, so let's get started by, by looking at two of the big boys in, in the psychedelic arena. Uh, by that I mean two of the major psychedelic molecules. We'll look at psilocybin, we'll look at LSD, and then later we'll, we'll, look, at, uh, we'll, look, at, we'll look at DMT certainly and, and, and um, mescaline as well. Uh, but let's just spend a bit of time looking at um, the structures of these molecules and, uh, and, and use them to kind of explain a bit of organic chemistry. Okay, let's go to the board. Okay, so here we can see um, two psychedelic molecules. Uh, one of them is uh, psilocybin, of course, here, and then we've got LSD here. And then in the middle, we've got our old friend serotonin. Now, you can see that there are these three molecules have kind of three different represent sorry two different representations along the top you've got what are called space filling models this is kind of a way to represent the, the structure in a kind of semi realistic manner whereas on the bottom you've got the kind of the standard way of representing molecular structures now i'm not going to assume that you know what these mean and looking at some of your tattoos of dmt um, i'm i'm certainly not convinced uh, that you know anything about uh, that you are you know 100 sure about uh, what these mean so let's do a bit of basic organic chemistry um, really basic organic chemistry so from the top so we, when we're talking about organic molecules generally we're talking about molecules that contain carbon hydrogen nitrogen and oxygen now, of course, you should know that carbon forms four bonds. Hydrogen, just the one. Uh, nitrogen, three, normally. Uh, oxygen, two, normally. So a simple organic molecule uh, might look something like this. Carbon attached together to form a chain. Uh, when carbon forms a chain, it tends to form a kind of a zigzag pattern, which is why you will, or a zigzag, zigzag shape, which is why you'll often see them drawn like this. Um, and then we can fill in with hydrogen. So this is a very simple, one of the simplest organic molecules um, that you can imagine. What is it called? It doesn't really matter. It's called butane. Um, lighter fuel, basically. Now, uh, let me just clear away this along the top, and I'm going to redraw this slightly differently. So normally, we, we don't, we, when we're drawing organic molecules, we, we tend not to draw explicitly the carbons and the hydrogens, simply because uh, they're kind of taken for granted. All organic molecules are based on carbon and hydrogen, so we can assume the carbon and hydrogen is there. Um, so we'd normally draw that just like that. Uh, so obviously you've got one carbon, two carbon, three carbons, four carbons, and the hydrogens are there, um, but we, uh, we just don't draw them basically. Uh, let's draw another one for good measure. Um, so let's say we've got um, carbon, carbon. I'll draw the carbon skeleton, as it's called, out first. So we've got six carbons forming a hexagonal shape. Um, we can also introduce double bonds between carbons. That's also possible, like this. So we've got three double bonds, three single bonds between uh, the carbons. Uh, and to, to complete the bonds, four bonds for each carbon. We add hydrogens. 
So each carbon gets one hydrogen. Now this, of course, or not necessarily of course, if you don't know, this is benzene. Um, and we would normally not draw it like this. We would normally draw it like this. Okay, so um, let's do one more, but um, we will add um, maybe, uh, okay, let's draw this. So this time I'm not, I'm just going to go straight to the Um, simplified version. This time we've got a nitrogen. We normally do draw in the nitrogen. Um, so here we've got, obviously, that you can see the benzene ring here. Um, and then you've got two carbons here. And then it's this second carbon here is uh, attached to a nitrogen. Sometimes you will see it drawn NH2 like that. If you want to be absolutely explicit, is kind of unnecessary normally you can draw the, uh, the hydrogens like that but either way is fine it's exactly the same structure um, this actually is called phenyl ethyl amine amine uh, amine by the way so this is the amine group with a nitrogen here uh, and this is actually uh, mescaline is based upon uh, this uh, phenyl ethylamine or sometimes simply written as phenethylamine uh, a benzene ring, when it's part of another molecule, um, is called a phenyl group. Um, so actually, if you add three, so let me tidy this a little bit. Yeah, so this is a uh, phenylethylamine or phenethylamine. Um, then let's add some other groups to it. So let's add three oxygens. And then each of those oxygens we're going to attach to CH3. Like this. This is uh, called trimethoxyphenethylamine, which is actually mescaline. Um, so if we were to draw this from scratch, um, we would normally... Draw it simply like this, OCH3. Like this. So this is this is uh, this is mescaline. Okay. Um, okay, so that's basic, basic organic chemistry. Um, just so you know uh, what you're looking at when you're actually looking at these, these chemical structure diagrams, because it is quite important in this unit. Um, now, okay, so I'm going to finish this first video by uh, introducing us to the tryptamine. So we've just seen there the, the phenethylamines, or the, the basic structure of a, a phenethylamine, which is this phenyl group attached to two carbons and then the nitrogen NH2 group on the end. Uh, and this is called a phenethylamine, and mescaline is based upon this, as, is, as are all the drugs in Alexander Shulgin's masterwork. Uh, Pical, phenethylamines I have known and loved. Now he also wrote Tical, tryptamines I have known and loved, and of course DMT, uh, psilocybin and LSD uh, are tryptamines. So we should certainly um, spend the last couple of minutes practicing our organic chemistry a little bit uh, and actually looking at the structure of uh, the tryptamines. So let's have a look now. So what we'll do is we'll build up the tryptamines um, from uh, scratch, from scratch. So we'll start with our old friend. Yeah, so it starts with a benzene ring. Now then we had some interesting second ring to this system. So it's a five-membered ring rather than a six-membered ring uh, that benzene is. You have a double bond uh, and then there's a nitrogen as well in there. So this uh, is called indole. And indole is a very important organic molecule um, and it, it has a very distinctive smell. If you ever smelt DMT, it has this very distinctive indolic smell. Um, 
some people find it very unpleasant, some people don't mind it too much. Anyway, so this is indole. Uh, if we then add two carbons, one carbon, two carbon, and then we add a amine group, as it's called. So this is this time NH2, this is an amine. Um, one carbon, two carbon. This yields something called tryptamine. Nothing to do with tripping. That's not why it was named. Um, it actually comes from tryptophan, which is an, uh, an amino acid, a naturally occurring amino acid that's, that's uh, found in everybody. So this is tryptamine. So this is the basis of uh, DMT, um, psilocybin, and LSD. Now, in, in this video, we'll just talk briefly about DMT uh, and psilocybin um, and give you an idea of where they come from. So, in this, in, in the basic tryptamine, uh, we have this um, we have this amine group here. Um, now, currently, it's a nitrogen with two hydrogens. Now, you can actually um, clear that. You can actually replace the two hydrogens um, with these CH3, so a carbon with three hydrogens. Uh, these are called methyl groups. So there's two methyl groups here. So this is dimethyl tryptamine, which of course is DMT. Now we can elaborate this further. We can actually add um, a hydroxyl here. So a hydroxyl is an OH group. Uh, and this then yields psilocin, which is the active, the active component of magic mushrooms. Now normally uh, in, in the actual, um, so this is actually for hydroxy uh, DMT. Now normally in the natural um, mushroom itself, that oxygen is normally attached to what's called a phosphate group, this uh, so basically, don't worry about too much about the structure there. This is so. This is for phosphoroxy DMT, which is uh, psilocybin, psilocybin, um, which is actually. But well, this is actually removed inside the body, um, and it's actually psilocin, the four hydroxy DMT, which is the active component. Um, okay, I think we're good there. Um, okay, so so that's. The basic structures of um, the phenethylamines uh, and the tryptamines. Um, now, in in the next video, we're going to talk about what are called structure activity relationships. So, as the name might suggest, what we want to do is now that we understand the structure of these molecules, um, to actually think about how they interact with the set, the receptor. Um, what is what is special about psilocin? compared to DMT, for example, or DMT versus LSD, which is, has a more complex structure, which we'll look at in the next video as well. Um, you know, what makes those special? Why do they interact with the receptor in particular ways to have particular effects? Uh, things like that. So this is a really important topic, but um, I will see you in the next video. Good stuff.